let's check the obvious safe. So what's this now? It appeared to be an embedded wall safe with a circular padlock and a panel of buttons comprised of the digits 0 through 9. Let me see. This looks almost like some kind of vault, doesn't it? We tried pressing buttons at random in hopes of opening the lock by pure chance, but that didn't do a thing. Following the spin clockwise indicator etched into the steel safe, we tried spinning the lock itself as well, but had no luck with that either. In fact, as soon as the lock made one full rotation, all the buttons we pressed would suddenly pop back out. So we're dealing with a combination locked safe surrounded by photos of Sachiko from when she was still still alive. If Yoshi was the one who set the combination, it's probably safe to assume it has something to do with Sachiko. You know, you're absolutely right. It must be something really simple. Whoever used this safe would have chosen something they wouldn't forget after all. The question is, what would that something be? We tried a handful of different combinations based on homonyms, rhyming, and the like. But every time we just spin the lock, hear a metallic thunk, and watch as the numbers were set on us. Sachiko, come on, think. We made it back from Heavenly Hills Elementary alive, so there must be some tidbit of knowledge we can use. What had we actually learned about Sachiko, though? Number-wise, all I could come up with was an approximate height, and that didn't work. What was it that... What was it that plague in the stairwell said? Oh, the plaque in the stairwell said. Sachiko, just before her seventh birthday? The kimono she was wearing in that picture was an exact match for the one we found in the box in the middle of this room. It seemed as if Yoshi were really fixating on Sachiko turning seven. So what about just the number seven by itself? It was a long shot, but it worked. Hey, I got it. Wow, nice job, Nakashima. The area of the wall all around the safe opened up like a secret door, with the combination lock holding in place and serving as a doorknob. Oh boy. Beyond the tiny door, a door so small that we had to crawl to fit through it, was a long staircase stretching down into a hidden underground room. <laughs> I'd see the spider webs and just bail. I'd be like, nope, not doing that. Spider webs, and the dust here is really thick. Okay, come on, I want to see too. Is this some kind of storehouse, maybe? I tried to get a better look at what we were crawling into, but the stairs went so far down that even with the flashlight, it was just too dark. So, this is a hidden passageway that shouldn't exist, inside a building that shouldn't exist. I think the danger level has reached its peak here. It feels like we're standing at the entrance to some realm that's not even part of this world. 
まっすぐに私の目を見つめる怖いんだでも言いたいことは分かってる The class rep looked me right in the eye. I was scared, but I knew exactly what she was going to say. She didn't need to speak a single word. Even if all that awaited us down here was an unimaginably horrific end. We were standing at the source of the answers we so desperately sought. We were poised to uncover the truth behind the curse of Sachiko Shinozaki. This was the gate to a new world. If we turned back, we'd regret it for the rest of our lives. So the two of us just looked to one another in the eyes and nodded. We were ready to descend the staircase into whatever abyss lurked below. I don't think even Naho made it this far, so be careful, Nakashima. Stay alert and focus down there, no matter what happens. She began descending the stairs ahead of me, but stopped and looked back after only a few steps to issue me this one last warning. I nodded again. <laughs> Uh-oh. It's those same footsteps. There really is something else here in, in here with us, wandering around. And it sounds like it's on the second floor. They were extremely close. It sounded as if they were poised just outside the door to Yoshi's room, just a few feet away. Nakashima, down the staircase, hurry! <laughs> yeah, regret for the rest of your lives, really? Would you really now? <laughs> Wonder if this goes into the school or like into the basement that was featured in the school or something really weird. Oh, okay. Oh boy. And so the two of us fled through the secret door and down the stairs. No more hesitation. The wind steps creaked and groaned beneath us even more than the ones from the main stairwell. It felt like they might fall apart at any moment. We took one step at a time, swallowing our fear and just pushing onward until eventually, finally, we arrived in a small, damp, musty room underground. Ooh. Are you alright? There's a lot of junk on the ground here, so be careful where you walk. Okay. There was no light down here with us whatsoever, save for the class rep's shaky flashlight beam, and all that beam revealed was a mess of books and clutter. With a twist of the wrist, it then shone upon a desk containing a chaotic mountain of books, loose leaf notes, documents, and assorted beakers and flasks. It looked like some mad scientist had done research and conducted all manner of untold experiments down here. What's that? It looks like someone's family tree. The class rep shot over toward a desk farther in. Her interest peaked by a glimpse of large documents spread on the surface. I followed her lead. Ah, you need light too, don't you? Sorry. There's a desk over there with saw blades and other sharp tools on it, so it's kind of dangerous. Stay where you are.
けど能力者一族系譜の図 Genealogy chart gifted line 家系図ね何能力者って It really is a family tree, but what does it mean by gifted? Shinozaki, Mifune, Shimamura, Mita, Nago. Kono Namai? Shinozaki, Mifune, Shimamura, Mita, Nagao. Oh, I recognize some of these things. Another tea, Uso de Monaino. That's right, it's not necessarily a lie. There were many individuals born in the closing days of the Meiji period who possessed remarkable powers. These people achieved fame for their photography abilities and psychic talents prior to the so called Senrigan Jigen, or Clairvoyance Controversy. Chizuko Mifune and Ikuku Nago, or Nageo, Nagao, were particularly noteworthy figures at the time, and whether their abilities were real or not is beside the point. What matters is that even after the scientific community discredited such abilities, the truly gifted continued exploring them anyway, often in secret. I wonder if this has something to do with the ability that Sachiko's mother was helping people and like healing people. I wonder if she was some kind of like medicinal gifted being or something. So, if they're the gifted line, does that mean Yoshi and Sachiko were descended from those famous clairvoyants? It sure seemed that way, and from the looks of it, the Shinozaki line was never blessed with male heirs either. It's a matrilineal house that passed its blood and family name down from mother to daughter, generation after generation, through adopted son-in-laws. I'm certain if I trace this family tree far enough, I find the names Yoshi and Sachiko. Ah, there they were. And just like everyone before her, Yoshi had married a man who had been adopted into the family in order to keep the Shinozaki name. Weird, because nobody had boys. Everybody had girls, so they adopted boys. Weird. Looks like the root of the tree is this person named Sarah. And Yoshi's mother name is Rocky? She was the eldest daughter in her family and had no brothers. That makes Yoshi a thoroughbred, a direct unfiltered descendant of Sarah. I guess it stands to reason then that she'd have so much power and influence even as a spirit. The rapping is getting pretty loud in here. Mm. All of these adopted fathers who continued the family line died suddenly after their children were born, it seems, without even one single exception. It's like the family line had a mind of its own and went to great lengths to eliminate the blood of other lines once it had served its purpose. 
結婚するからにはきっと愛情だってあるはずだからその先の女性だってつらいでしょう These are men who are willing to give up their own birthrights and take another's name for the sake of love. It must have been hard on the Shinazaki women. Daddy's not breathing. Oh. No, darling, no. I suppose this was a fate that just couldn't be averted. <laughs> so Sachiko saw her dead father. <laughs> Such a strong spiritual influence. <gasps> oh, is Ayumi gonna find out that she's one? She is the Shinzaki lineage. Is she related? Kane Shinzaki. Hirohito Ayato. That's my grandmother, my grandfather, and my dad. I remember hearing that my grandfather was adopted into my grandmother's family and passed away shortly after my dad was born. The head of the family had three daughters, and Grandma Kane is descended from the youngest. I thought it was creepy enough just having the same last name, but to think my family is actually from the same lineage as Yoshi and Sachiko. Or Sachiko. Why did I just say that? Sachiko. Are you stupid, Ayumi? Am I gifted then? What does that even mean? You could sense spirits and you are asking if you are gifted? Come on. Come on. Come on now. You can't tell me that this girl is so interested in the spirit world, she can sense heavy spirit in a room. She was possessed in Heavenly Host. And, you, and you're telling me that she had no idea she was gifted. Oh, I can... I can read what the ghosts are saying. I can sense spiritual power. Am I gifted? You know what? Not everybody can do that, Ayumi. Just say it. Just say it. Hey, did you find something? It's pitch black and really creepy just standing here, you know. Ah, yeah, sorry about that. I'll be right there. In fact, fire hazard or no, how about I lend you one of my candles? So is she going to mention something? The class rep had an old oversized sheet of paper in her hand and was shaking wildly. Did she find some crucial piece of information, I wondered? Book of Shadows. I don't need interpretation for that, right? <laughs> Class rep? Are you okay? It, it hurts. My head feels like it's being crushed in the vice. No, stop this. Keep it together. Uh -oh. Is she gifted, guys? What do you think? Uh-oh. 
She suddenly turned toward one corner of the room and froze completely, gazing intently at the wall. Her eyes became wide as saucers. She was like a cat who stiffened up and just kept staring into thin air, on high alert for no discernible reason. And just as cat owners are often left wondering what their pets are seeing, I too wondered if she was looking at something, or had she heard a noise, maybe. I was worried about her, but really, I was more scared than anything. I grabbed her and tried to shake her out of this disconcerting trance. Class rep, what's wrong? But she brushed me off and held up a hand as if to say, hold it right there. She then began walking slowly toward the corner she'd been watching. She's going to Blair Witch, everybody. She's going to Blair Witch. There didn't seem to be anything special about it. It looked no different from anything else in the room. It was just an ordinary wall. For a few moments longer, the class rep just stood there, gazing at this empty space. Then, with no explanation, she began tearing away these boards. It wasn't difficult to do. The entire room was old and in tremendous disrepair, and the wood was quite thoroughly rotted. Each board came off easily. Oh god, she's brave. Eventually, small gaps began to form. She stuck her fingers into these and pulled, yanking away whole chunks of wall forming bigger and bigger crevices. These crevices then finally merged into one big gaping hole, through which a sudden subroom no bigger than a closet had now been fully exposed. And within that subroom sat a thick, dark tone with candles. Oh, a book of shadows. Book of shadows. It's the book of shadows. Why is this in Japan? What's going on? What's the book of shadows? Whatever it was, it was clearly a very old book, and it didn't look like it was bound from paper. There were small ornamental patterns sewn into it, all of which had certain disconcerting quality about them. In addition, a liquid that looked just as much like blood as it did ink had pooled into multi-hued stains all across the lip of the front cover. And that grotesque cover was already unpleasant looking enough to begin with. <laughs> There's no mistaking it. These pages were made from human skin and animal hide. This is, without a doubt, the Book of Shadows. Sis told me about it. It's a dark tome with a long history wrought in blood, passed down from generation to generation in secret. It dates back to the tumultuous days of the witch hunts that occurred at the end of the Middle Ages, primarily in Europe. Witch hunts? Yeah, mass paranoia led to the indiscriminate persecution and slaughter of as many as 40,000 people. At 
They were suspected of practicing black magic by making pacts with the devil. So the churches and local communities brought them to trial where they were almost always subjected to horrible torture and eventually executed. Yeah. Usually in really cruel ways. <clears throat> People began blaming them for natural disasters, poverty, and other unfortunate realities of life. And influential individuals used them as scapegoats. The vast majority of those killed were just innocent victims of circumstance who happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. But there were a few. There were a few gifted people among them who had legitimately mastered the practical use of magic. Gifted people? And what do you mean, practical use of magic? Are you talking like witches flying around on brooms and stuff? That's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> it is hard to believe, isn't it? That must be your mom. But I want you to know everything about this, Ayumi. About the things in this world that science can't quite explain. About the paranormal. I'm already familiar with your studies, though. You taught me the laws of the natural world and that the true nature of magic is prayer. It makes sense, too. It's really easy to understand how powers like that would work. But anything more than that, like flying around on brooms and stuff, just seems like fantasy to me. Oh, is this like her sister, maybe? Mm hmm And I'm sure that's what Dad and Mom must have thought, too, when I told them I was interested in Wicca. To them, it's all just dangerous fantasy. Though there are also the Shinozaki family roots to consider, but that's a long story. So how about we save it for another time? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh? Okay. Witches, you see, were usually village elders and sages back in those days, conducting themselves with intelligence, dignity, and honor. So when the witch hunts began, they were smart enough to hide their powers from public view, and as a result, ironically, the majority of them survived. But even after the ban on witchcraft was lifted, the memories of what happened remained, and the black arts continued to be socially shunned. Eventually, the powers of magic began to fade with disuse. And the witches feared that these powers, passed from generation to generation through their long, proud history, were in danger of being lost forever. So they began chronicling them on paper in painstaking detail for all posterity. So the Book of Shadows is like 
a book that like witches over the years created and like marked and like wrote notes and like kept documents and stuff throughout generations so this is like the family emblem book kind of thing I am not sure why they're saying exactly like like Book of Shadows in English. My only guess is that maybe there is no direct Japanese interpretation of Book of Shadows without it sounding weird or like sounding like something else or meaning something else because Japanese language is weird. There may not be like certain like words or like signs or anything that they can draw to mean that so they just say in English book of shadows is my only guess I could be a hundred percent wrong but that's just off the top of my head passed from one gifted mage to another revised and appended countless times a complete guide to witchcraft detailing spells pertaining to all creation oh, excuse me you may have heard in, of all Azif, that infamous Lovecraftian grimoire that everyone says is just a work of fiction. But whenever this book comes up, even among researchers, people always debate whether or not it's real. They always admit it's a possibility. Supposedly, it contains a complete listing of white and black magic spells, all manner of lost arts, even some forbidden acts of sorcery. As in the reality, the, in, as in the really dangerous kind of magic? Mm, it would be really dangerous in the wrong hands. That's why it was supposed to be enshrined and kept under watch by the witch's descendants who died. So why is something like that here then, tucked away in a hidden room in rural Japan? I don't know, but it's been a good half a century or so since anyone's been able to prove they laid eyes on it. And that's led many people to start doubting its existence. The class rep suddenly picked up the book and began casually thumbing through it, as if she were looking up a word in the dictionary. Hey, is it really okay to be holding that, much less opening it? Asking the real questions. Y yeah, it can't hurt to take a quick look. The tome with its cover that seemed to have been stitched together from the hides of many different animals looked heavy in the class rep's hands. She became instantly engrossed in its contents as she hungrily flipped through the pages one after another. As for me, all I could do was watch in awe as my very real friend and classmate lost herself in this very occult book in this very impossible place. As expected, the book was written not in Japanese, but in a mixture of French and what I could only assume to be magic runes of some sort. As a high school student, I certainly couldn't read any of it, nor could the class rep, but some pages had Japanese notes scribbled in the margins. Notes that were very possibly penciled in by Yoshi Shinozaki, 
日本語注釈のあるページに出ているといいんだけど確か茶術の中には I have no idea if there'll be Japanese footnotes for it or not, but I'm betting if I look in the sorcery section. The glint in her eyes was one of desperation as she continued flipping through the pages. What was she doing? I was starting to get uncomfortably nervous about this whole thing. Eventually, her legs must have gotten tired as she just sat on the floor, but she continued paging through the Book of Shadows. Then, finally, she seemed to find whatever she was looking for. The sound of stretched skin flipping upon itself stopped, and she just stared. This is it. What? Land of Corpse. The Land of Corpse. Land of corpses, a spell to open the door of the dead. I think this is what created Heavenly Host. There are notes all over it. There certainly are. But why has the whole page been crossed out like that? I don't know. Maybe the spell failed. Maybe whoever was casting it seized up a fear partway through. But that doesn't matter now. Uh oh. Look, look at this. Look, Nakashima. Phrasing of the corpses. A spell to resurrect the dead. That can't actually work, can it? Resurrecting the dead is just impossible. Are you still bound by common sense then? Have you forgotten where we are now? I had to admit, that was a good point. Reality as I knew it was far different now than it was when I woke up this morning. But it's still okay for us to do something like that? I mean, ethically? Won't we be crossing a line humans aren't meant to cross? Are you scared? Oh, I was thinking for a moment. I was thinking she was going to try to bring, like, like, Yoshi back or something. But no, she wants to bring back her friends. She wants to use this to bring back her friends. No, you're just, you're not just scared. You're also forgetting about all the people we lost, about what they've been going through. Think about Miss Yui and Suzumoto and Shinohara and Marishige. All of their wits end, suffering in that horrible place. Think about how painful their deaths were, and how their existences were erased from this world. Can you really accept that as a reality? I know I sure can't, and I'm betting the same is true for you. That's right. Our friends were dead. They died, and we came here so we could do something about it. And if we didn't do this, nothing would change. They'd still be dead, no hopes of ever hearing your voices again, their faces eventually forgotten. Tears began welling up in my eyes. 
何だっていいみんなが帰ってくるのなら聖子ともう一度会えるなら I miss them so much and I do whatever it took to get them back if I could see them again if I could talk to Seiko even one more time <laughs> oh no we're bringing back zombies everybody ready your bats It's okay. It's okay. There's nothing to be afraid of anymore. We climbed our way out of that hell. We broke free from Heavenly Host. So let's follow our hearts now. If there's something we can do to fix this situation, then we have to do it. So, come on, let's do it. Okay. Oh, I wonder if this is like what led to like them being stuck in like a deja vu time loop thing. I wonder if we're just going full circle. It didn't matter how improbable or even impossible this was. Even if there were only one in a million chance, we had to take it. It was absolutely foolish of us to try this. It was unnatural and unholy, completely inadvisable. But as long as there was that slight possibility, this was something that just had to be done. We weren't about to give up without a fight. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> I've heard that practitioners of forbidden sorcerers suffer even greater payback for their actions than black magic users. But this book wasn't written in Japanese, and I can't read the parts that warn about that, so out of sight, out of mind, I can handle this. This isn't quite the solution I had in mind, but as long as it lets us reunite with the friends we lost, I really don't care. Since they don't even exist in this world anymore, dragging them back by force seems like our only option. Yeah, so let's just do it. Oh no. Okay, how about we start with Suzumoto? We need a photograph for the spell to work, and I've got one of her with me. Alright, so they're bringing back Mayu. What? How? There's eyeballs. There's a bat wing. There's there's some red stuff. There's there's green stuff. There's maggots. What? What? You 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 can't know. Oh my god. I. I'm in shock of how fucked up this is right now. <sighs> no, Mayu's gonna come back to us and she's just gonna be like a fucking pile of meat. She's not gonna have anything. She's just gonna be <sighs> like... Our first attempt at resurrecting the dead was going to be a spell to bring back Mayu Suzumoto. <laughs> All the materials we needed were present and accounted for in bottles and jars within the room. A beetle carapace, carapace, part of an animal's body, etc. The first step was to carve a pentagram into the floor with a knife, then place three paper dolls in the center. 
of the sort used in the Sachiko ritual. The one in the middle would bear the name of the person we wish to raise, and the ones on either side would bear the names of the casters, our names. Suzumoto Mayu. Mayu Suzumoto. <sighs> the class rep was then to place Suzumoto's photo on the top of the paper doll dedicated to her. Oh no. I know, right? Full Metal Alchemist, I was thinking that. That's what this feels like. We're gonna lose an arm and a leg. As for our paper dolls, we had to blow on them three times, then cut both of our palms with the knife and coat the spell materials in our blood. <sighs> <sighs> okay, here we go. Be strong. Uh -oh. My blood mixed together with the class reps in the white ceramic dish forming one singular globule. I remembered hearing once that everyone's blood is a slightly different color, and found myself thinking of this as I applied pressure to my throbbing palms. Hold on a second. Okay, I didn't want to cough in everybody's thing. <sighs> With all the setup taken care of, it was now time to chant the spell. Fortunately, these foreign words all had Japanese pronunciations written in above them. I'm not repeating that because it's just that. <clears throat> this was starting to feel crazy. I was sitting here listening to the class rep chant a magic spell to raise the dead, for goodness sakes. I wasn't sure how much of a grip I had on reality anymore. What were we thinking, trying something like this? Would this really bring Suzumoto back? No, I had to concentrate. If I doubted the spell, then the spell would fail. For now, I had to believe that this would work. And I had no reason not to. <laughs> Uh-oh. The ritual took several hours to complete, with the class rep carefully chanting away the whole time. Finally, the last word on the last page was spoken. Uh oh. Class rep? Are you okay? Come on. Well, do you think it's going to work? Blood red stains that looked almost like letters suddenly splashed onto the open book of shadows, although it was unclear where they come from. What? She caught on fire. No, if the book catches fire, we. The class rep quickly snatched the book away from the flame that had sprouted out of thin air. 
けれど彼女の片代には火がつかずに残っていた。The photo of Suzumoto she'd set down had completely burned to nothing, but the paper doll below it was unscathed. So, what does that mean? Does it mean we succeeded? Y yeah. Oh. No. No. Oh my God! It's Mayu. Shig, where are you? This voice is Suzumoto. We fought with our hands. Oh no! I'm fucking shaking. <laughs> This is just a story I'm reading, but I'm just very like. That voice was unmistakably Suzumoto's. The two of us took one another's hands, and we just waited. <laughs> oh, I'm so scared. <laughs> I'm so scared. Sheik, where are you? <laughs> She's gonna be like flailed open or like something. It's gonna be. I'd started to call out to her, but the class rep held up her other hand to stop me. Something's not right. What do you mean? She's walking in circles. Oh no. After another few footsteps, we heard the unmistakable sound of the heavy safe door we left ajar opening all the way. Oh my god. Oh Then the footsteps resumed. And this time, they were coming toward us. I'd instinctively shrunk in back and frozen myself in place, afraid of the unknown presence approaching us from above. She was certainly in no hurry, slowly. Plodding leech climbed down the staircase. Suzumoto san da ta. Oh no. Oh no. It was Suzumoto, all right. Takedo kaoga. Kaoga makuro. Memo, hanamo, kuchimo. Nani mo nai. But her face. Her face was completely blotted out. No eyes, no nose, no mouth. Honestly, not as bad as I was anticipating, but still pretty creepy. Oh god. Uh -uh. I couldn't tell if she was screaming or moaning, but either way, she was clearly in agony. The sound was barely even human. It was a death knell. Uh oh. -uh. Oh boy. Our spell had failed.
The Suzumoto-like being we'd summoned was lying flat on the ground, face up, writhing and spasming. There was nothing we could do to help her. Nothing at all. As I observed these convulsions, I noticed rune-like symbols appearing all over her body. And then, without warning, her paper doll burst into flames. As soon as it did, blood began spraying from each of the runes of her body like water shooting from a fire hose. Holy crap. Oh her arms, neck, and thighs all separated from her torso, right where the runes had appeared a moment ago, and the Suzumoto-like being moved no more. The flame that had engulfed the paper doll was now completely extinguished, leaving behind nothing but ash. <laughs> See, this is why I don't fuck with shit. <laughs> what just happened? Then the class rep fell to her knees as well. She was bleeding from her arms and legs in the same exact spots as Suzumoto like B, and bore the same runic marks. <laughs> class rep! from the from the shed were just oh god what? rounded saw blades were now jutting from the marks on her body what where did they come from God, it hurts. Class rep. It hurts. Uh, what is this? It's exactly the same. The same death that this fake Suzumoto was subjected to. I'm going to die in the exact in exactly the same way. Oh man. I've heard that practitioners of forbidden sorcery suffer even greater payback for their actions than black magic users. This, this is reflecting back to what was said earlier, and this is why you need to read everything. <coughs> Pay back. Oh boy. No, no, no. 
Not the Shima. The paper doll. Put it out. Hang in there. I'll have it out in no time. Just another few seconds. Uh oh. I tried putting out the fire by slapping the paper doll with my hand. I was so panicked I couldn't even feel the heat of the flame on my skin. Go out, damn it, go out! Go out, go out already, goddammit! It wasn't working. It wasn't doing anything. The fire just continued to burn. It's not going out. What do I do? No, please. Wasn't there anything else I could try? I looked around and I saw a paint can full of water nearby. Come on, work! I was acting on impulse. I didn't even think about what I was doing. I just threw the entire contents of the can right into the flaming paper doll. Oh my god. Okay. Uh-oh. Blood began spurting from the mark on the class rep's neck. The rounded saw blade from the desk earlier was digging into it for some reason. I don't want to die. Save me. <laughs> Class rep! <sighs> there seemed to be no escape for us. We were destined to die here. This was our punishment for meddling in things no human should. For playing God. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> now, what did we all learn here today? Mine was on fire now, too. I was next. There was no fighting this. We were both going to die here. We were going to die horribly and painfully. Oh! You know? You know it? Uh oh. Like an angel sent down from on high, our savior suddenly appeared. A woman older than us scrambled down the stairs, calling out the class rep's name. She leapt, she leaped over the railing, practically dove toward the burning paper dolls. Oh, by the power of the guardian spirits, I cast out that which would do us harm. Daidiko Guju Ano Aku Un. Oh, is that the big sister? Can we just remind ourselves for the fact that Ayumi had like saw blades in her and stuff? Oh boy. S sis? The fire is out. I had no idea what this woman had just done, but whatever it was, it saved us. The flames were out and we were no longer in danger. And the class rep's neck, though gashed, was still fully intact. It's her sister. She flung herself at this new arrival and latched on, tears practically exploding from her eyes. 
I guess this was that sister of hers I heard so much about. She probably could tell. Oh. But how did you know where I was? Sis? Yes, precisely that. Give me a minute to collect my thoughts because holy shit. Also, I'm trying to skip this and it's not letting me, so that's cool. Oh my god. Oh. Like, I, <laughs> that was a lot to absorb at the end, and I have no idea how to do it. I just, I'm speechless. I am so speechless. Like Wow. Like, I have a lot of questions, more questions than answers. First of all, why did the truck guy never come back? What happened to him? Did he exist in the first place? No idea. And... Two, why did the lady, the old lady, why was she so scared of everything? Because... This is obviously before Heavenly Host. Like, she knows nothing about it. So, like, what happened? And, like, the Book of Shadows was just like, okay. 
And then performing that ritual was stupid, obviously. But why did the sister know she was there? How and why? And then the whole Mayu thing coming back was just... I don't even know. So, yeah, I guess they, they needed a better photo, but, like, they, 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 one doesn't exist because... <sighs> wow. But you know what? The game doesn't like Mayu, however, I am grateful they brought back Mayu and they didn't bring back Seiko. Because if they brought back Seiko and then we saw her get blown apart, Naomi would fucking lose it. She would just shut down. So I think they just decided to choose a friend like that was like a mutual friend and not like a super close friend to either one of them. But wow. So that means that going into Blood Drive. They're alive, so far. But now, Ayumi's sister is it. Holy crap. Also, I've been streaming for five hours. So, okay, so that definitely means that in the future we're going to have to visit Blood Drive. But, holy crap. So, that concludes this game. And I know there's other endings and possibilities, but hands down, I think we're done. I think we're done with this. So, Tuesday will probably be movie night for us because we're going back on normal schedule. So Tuesday will probably be a movie night. But, holy... That, that'll be it. <laughs> that'll be it. Um, so, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this crazy adventure. Don't summon rituals. Don't bring your friends back from the dead. Don't read languages or incantations that aren't in your language. Don't go to haunted houses. Don't perform Sachiko Ever After charms. Don't listen to any charms you find on the internet. Just, just don't. Just, just don't. Just do not. Ever. It's not a good idea. It's never a good idea. Just, just don't do it. And I will see you guys next time with something else. <laughs> so, until then, take care everybody. We'll see you next time for movie night and I'll see you then. So have a good night and don't die, and see you next time. Bye.